everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Guacamelee. This is the new luchador-themed Metroidvania from the guys at Drinkbox Studios. You might remember them from Tales from Space, Mutant Blobs Attack, previously a Vita launch title, I believe, but also a game that came out on the PC last summer that I took a look at. And uh, this is available on PSN and also on uh, PS3 and PS Vita. So if you buy it on one, you get cross-buy capabilities and you can play it on both. Or you can use, you know, the PS Vita as a map that is kind of standalone from the screen as you're playing. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. This is uh, one of the most fun downloadable games that I've played in a long time. I was pretty hyped about this when I played it at PAX. I've been hearing about this game for a few years. Uh, and I did name it among my, my favorite games from PAX each 2013. I've played about an hour and a half of this so far. Uh, and I'm having a great time so far. So I'm gonna try to explain the basic mechanics. I don't want to spoil too much, uh, but I do want to explain why I think this is one of the most exciting and just downright fun downloadable releases that I've played in a long time. So we are playing as Juan here. Uh, Juan is a luchador, but he's also undead, which is obviously a, a source of innumerable stress for him. So this is the, uh, the city of, I believe we're in Santa Lucida right now. Uh, and the problem is that Santa Lucida has been overrun during the Day of the Dead. Uh, with kind of demons and whatnot, and they've kidnapped El Presidente's daughter, who is our love interest, uh, and also threatened to destroy the world. So we've got to stop them, uh, basically by beating them up with some Mexican-themed moves, or I shouldn't say Mexican-themed, Mexican wrestling-themed moves, uh, like luchador moves, etc., etc. Uh, so if I can just hit the select key here, uh, I can take a look at our map and we can see where we're supposed to go. So we're gonna go to, uh, Forest Del Chivo, I apologize for my awful pronunciation, and we'll talk a little bit more about mechanics, but, uh, all you need to know right now is that this is a side-scrolling Metroidvania. Uh, it's both combat and exploration focused. It's a little bit shadow complexy. Uh, it's a little bit outlandy. If you previously played Outland, I'm just using the uh, map here to kind of get a feel for where I'm supposed to go. And I, I apologize if I spoil anything over the course of this video. I don't think I will. And this is a new area that I've never seen before, so I'm just gonna see if maybe I can fit through here and get some special upgrades. In true, you know, Metroidvania style, what the heck is going on here? There's like some poison gas of some sort. Uh, and a QR code. Just scan that and see what happens. I have no idea. Uh, but in true Metroidvania style, there is a lot, or there are a lot of branching paths here that can only be accessed, you know, later in the game once you actually get uh, certain upgrades. It seems like she is in the forest there. Now, I should point out, take a look in the background throughout this video. You're going to see a lot of references to memes, gaming culture, internet culture, etc., etc. So there's the Viva Pinata reference. As we continue walking here, I guarantee we will see a ton more. Like, let's see what's on this billboard here. I actually don't know what that is. That might be a Guacamelee original, so be it. I've seen Castle Crashers references, Simpsons references, uh, believe you me, I can't possibly do justice to them. There's gonna be a ton of them uh, over the course of this entire game. But for now, let's go to the forest and we'll see. Uh, this might be an area that I've previously been to, but by backtracking, now that I have a number of new abilities, it might allow me to explore it a little bit more effectively. So I, I kind of want to get into some combat right away so I can explain what's going on with that, and luckily, uh, we will have the opportunity to do so. So the way that the combat works, uh, I'm playing this on the PS3 if for some reason that was unclear. I haven't touched the Vita version myself, but I have downloaded it, because uh, it does have co-op, like cross-co-op uh, between the Vita and the, the PS3. So I'm using the square button to do my primary attack. Is this the way we want to go? It appears so. Uh, I'm using the square button to do my primary attack. It looks like we're gonna have some kind of like mob trap room, for lack of a better word, uh, against these armadillos. Now there's a number of different ways that we can kind of get involved in the combat here. There is a learning curve on the combat. Basically, um, square is gonna be our basic attack. Uh, and after we, oh, I forget what the attack is to uh, get these shields out of here. One second. Some of these guys have different kind of auras around them and those auras, uh, give them a shield. Now it might be that, no that shouldn't do it. I think it'll be an uppercut that breaks through this aura. Good. So I'm playing really terribly right now. Uh, but despite that, as soon as this guy, just let this flower perk up here and then we'll uppercut him, he'll be up here. Then we'll pile drive him, that should kill him. Beautiful. Now we only have one left and we're gonna uppercut this guy to get his shield away. Jesus Christ, this is actually some of the hardest combat I've had so far. We have a roll that I haven't talked about so far. Get out of the way. Um, but I haven't even come close to bringing up any of the nuance involved in the combat because there are, there are various kind of standard combos we can do. Not in the standard like press these buttons and you'll do a different set of moves, but the, kind of the moves link together uh, in a way that's kind of cool. So I want this to come up, I want to break the shield, but at the same time uh, I don't want to get hit by the spike if that makes sense, which is what's making this a difficult fight. By the way, all these special moves that I'm doing, like that uppercut, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. I'm hoping that I'm not making a huge mistake. Because he's red, I'm almost positive we're supposed to break the shield with the uppercut here. We also have this like froggy slam move, which we can do. Uh, but these are all using the energy bar that I have at the bottom of the screen there. So I think maybe what I want to do first thing is do a froggy slam. 
I know this sounds silly, but just wait for this flower to go. Do a froggy slam, then we do an uppercut, and then we beat him up in the air, and then we pile drive him. Beautiful. Okay, so that was terrible. We should get a pinata now, which will give us some extra money. I apologize for that terrible uh, spell of combat. The game does get difficult at some points, but usually not insanely so. So in terms of our abilities, uh, you've seen this uppercut. That's going to function both... Eh, we probably found a secret area there. Uh, both as a, uh, a way to do increased damage, but also as a way to unlock new areas, as you'll see. We can also turn into a chicken. This will kind of function as like our super ball mechanic, which will allow us to kind of move forward down here. We might want to stay as a chicken because I've just died there. Um, let's try to do this whole platforming spell as a chicken. See if we can make it happen. Again, that's going to be like our super ball and we are going to find some kind of upgrade up here. This is probably going to be a health token. If you get three of those, then you get an increased health bar. Again, the, the Super Metroid uh, references or the Super Metroid kind of design decisions uh, become immediately apparent here. So I don't know what happens. It's the first switch I've ever run across in this game. I'm Oh, I botched it. I'm hoping there's some kind of sweet little upgrade over here that maybe that hitting that switch has given me. But I'm not totally sure. Uh, it appears that maybe I've created some kind of toxic gas cloud. We might need to use our uppercut to get over here. And I kind of want to try to get to this. Oh, we've unlocked something over here because this armadillo is pretty angry at us. So let's throw it up in the air. Maybe we can grapple it again on the way down and then throw it down. Uh, the way that you deal with combat in this game is going to... Is this something on the ground that I... No. Okay. Uh, the way that you kind of handle combat in this game, uh, I try to get the highest combo possible because usually that, I believe, gives you the most coins and coins allow you to upgrade your character. But in any case... I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. Let's just play a little Guacamelee. This is a warp zone, uh, which I don't believe I need to go through. Uh, instead, I guess we're just going to continue moving to the left here. I didn't expect it to take so long to get to this next part of this mission, but that's okay. Um, let's jump up over here. By the way, uh, the reason that I stopped playing Guacamelee last night, after only about an hour and a half, is because I've heard that it is kind of a short game, uh, maybe in the four to six hour mark, if you're just trying to beat it. Uh, without getting 100% completion. So I didn't want to show off things that were like too far towards the end of the gameplay, but there is a, a pretty basic mechanic there where you can see how um, oh, if I come across a green block, I can do like one move to break it. If I come across a red block, I can do that uppercut to break it. Uh, and that's kind of how things are gated off in the game. Uh, it's got a little bit of a cave story vibe in that sense. Now I can't attack these guys because these guys right now are in the world of the living and I am in the world of the dead. We will come across uh, dimension switching portals but for now, I think we are trapped in the world of the dead. And the reason we're going to play Blucho is to kind of talk to the uh, big bad's scorned woman, scorned girlfriend, if you will, who I believe is going to kind of take us out of the world of the dead. Let's see if we can buy something here. Uh, we have $2,500, so we can use this to buy new moves. Uh, I've been using the pile driver a lot, which allows us to do a lot of damage. There's also Das Boot, which allows us to kick enemies far away, which might be good for keeping distance between us. Uh, and the Suplex, which I guess does splash, dam splash damage, so why don't we pick that up? We can also gain kind of like passive abilities, uh, like increased rate of health regeneration and stuff like that, but that's not really that necessary right now. By the way, I should mention that uh, there is drop-in, drop-out co-op. What's this guy trying to say to me? Just because this is the dead world doesn't mean we're down all the time. Take today, for instance, I am preparing a great fiesta for all of my amigos. That's really nice. Um, but yeah, there is drop-in, drop-out co-op. So if you ever wanted to, basically at any time, just have a second player join, all you need to do is press start. Sadly, there is no online multiplayer. Uh, where's, where's our lady friend at here? Maybe downwards. Um, there is no online multiplayer, but, uh, you know, the co-op doesn't necessarily seem to be all that integral to the experience of the game. It's just kind of like a nice addition. It's not necessarily... Um, a, a necessity in order to enjoy yourself, shall we say. Uh, but yes, it is indeed local co-op. But you, d you can play cross-play again. It's drop-in, drop-out, or you can, uh, you know, have someone going on with the Vita as well. Sadly, I didn't get that secret up there, but maybe we'll get our opportunity here in the future. Okay, so here's where she is. I'm not sure if we're gonna have to fight it, her. Uh, I'm not gonna read through the text here either. But I might have to challenge her. I don't know, because there is a boss meter up here at the top. I haven't really fought any bosses so far. It would be a shame if this boss ended up being super difficult and totally derailed my play here so far, but in any case. She's basically been scorned by her lover, who is way more focused on her job than her. Um, we can all be lonely at times. Can't we, Luchador, in need of some tenderness, some emotion, some arousal? She's like a succubus, basically, or a temptress. Uh, sure. Come to me, Luchador. Take me in your burly arms. No, don't do it! Okay, soon you'll be my slave, then I can have some real fun. So we are going to have a boss fight here, and I really like the presentation, by the way. We're playing Kachtabe, which I hope is the correct pronunciation there. Um, 
But yeah, I really like the presentation, how it kind of frames uh, this as like a wrestling match. That was bad damage for me to take. I haven't figured out. Once I get her pattern, I'm sure we'll be fine. Uh, I should be definitely rolling whenever she does that. Because that gives me a period of invincibility. Okay, so our Luchador uppercut has worked really well. Uh, she's disappeared. We, uh, apparently rolling through that. Oh, okay, we can't roll through fire attacks, which might be causing our problem there. Okay, and we'll do an aerial attack. If I could just grapple her afterwards, I would be psyched, but apparently that's not a possibility. So she's put us in a, another dimension now. Uh, now maybe I can grapple her and pile drive her into the spikes below. That seemed to work out fairly well. I wonder if I can make this work again. I, I seem to have found a pretty good pattern here. Oh, gotta watch out for that one, though. So I'm probably gonna die this first time, as you can see, uh, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy, maybe. Uh, but I, I have a feeling, you know, once I get the pattern figured out here, it's not gonna be as, as difficult as it first appears. You know, as with basically any game out there. Uh, just have to watch out for that, like, third attack that she does, where she can be kind of a jerk about things. They, oh, I thought I was gonna be able to get over that right there. So far, the game seems pretty lenient. I mean, it's not super difficult. There, there have been times where I've kind of gotten stuck for a while. Uh, but it's usually actually, like, platforming sections. The combat hasn't been too bad so far. Uh, but I have had some trouble at, like, particularly difficult platforming sections in the game, believe it or not. I mean, I, I believe that you will believe it, because <laughs> there is, you know, the reputation that Northern Lion sucks at video games. Now, just jump over this. Not that there was any risk to us there. And so far, so good. We've only been hit once. If I know retro-inspired games, my guess is that she is going to go through some kind of transformative period fairly, fairly soon. And I could probably link up a longer combo on her if I could just uppercut her. Oh, that didn't work out too well. Okay, she's hurt. Just give up, Luchador. Your fate is sealed. You will not leave this cave alive. Okay, again, she has done some kind of new move now. Oh, okay, that uppercut actually seems pretty strong. But I can get her as well. What I'm trying to do is, like, link up a, a number of attacks on her. Please don't die now that you're on the second phase of her. It seems like the uppercut is really the, the good combo starter here uh, for this lady, anyway. That rain attack is probably something I'm going to want to stay away from if I had to guess. Oh, that was not good. Uh, I think we're gonna be fine here. If I could only gra- ah, there we go, I got a good grapple off there, just to do a little bit of extra damage off the top. She actually seems like one of the easier, kind of larger enemies I've fought so far. Even though I did die once. Although, it looks like she's gonna transform again! How amusing that you presume to have the strength to defeat me. Many men have come to my lair before you. Their skulls adorn the walls! Eh, okay, I see a couple. Uh, now let's try to make sure that we don't die to her decoys! Okay. Now, this is gonna be a little trickier. You can see that what these guys have a shield. Um, the red shield, again, is needs to be broken by an uppercut. Oh man, I just died already. That was super quick. Please don't restart me from the beginning. We're gonna be at the halfway point. Okay, that's fine. I can deal with that. Maybe I shouldn't have said, uh, or talked about how easy this lady is. Uh, because things appear to have changed in her favor. It's okay, though. Just roll through her up! Oh, okay, we're alright. Um, enemies with different co color auras, uh, require... What, I did catch her again there. Uh, require a different set of attacks. Uh, or a different style of attacks to break those auras. But I believe I've touched on that earlier already. Uh, didn't take any damage there. So she should enter that next cutscene any second now. How amusing that you presume to have the strength to defeat me. Blah, blah, blah. Men's skulls on the walls. No big deal. Uh, just play it cool here for a second. The red one is going to be uh, one we're going to want to uppercut like so. The green one is going to be one we're going to want to froggy slam. Uh, if I could just get her to get a little closer. Oh, I, I didn't do it properly. There we go. By the way, the, the special moves are all mapped to the, uh, that was bad. The, the circle button, which makes it very easy to do them, uh, repeatedly. There we go. Get her caught in this. That didn't seem to do any damage. I'm not sure if, like, one is real and, and one is not, if that's the way that this is supposed to work. Maybe the green one is real. Oh, no, I just killed the decoy. Okay. It, actually, it does appear, then, the green one is real. I think we're gonna be A-OK -okay here. Get in there. Can't grapple, unfortunately. Oh, knocked her out of her spell. I don't know what I'm missing here in order to finish this off. Okay, so she's got the the headbutt ability now. We're going to need to break her aura, so just get over here. I really did not intend for me to be at a boss fight by now, by the way. That was bad for me, but again, still doing very well uh, from a health standpoint here, if I do say so myself. Try to break that aura. That's just a standing circle in order to do that attack. That's good. We can punch her again in the air. That actually did a surprising amount of damage. What's her problem now? And by what's her problem? I mean, what's my problem? What's her aura? Actually, that was a fairly good boss fight. I'm pleased with myself, considering that was basically a sight read. Uh, I haven't talked about this yet, which is crazy because we're 15 minutes into the video, but the presentation in Guacamelee is definitely a big strength. It adheres to this kind of luchador-style 
uh, aesthetic very, very well. And it makes for a unified game. It's a game that's kind of like tonally similar. It doesn't have any kind of like shocking, you know, genericness thrown in. It's got its own unique charm, shall we say. All right, so she's gonna spare my life, which is nice. Carlos wasn't always such a bad guy. Carlos is the uh, the big bad in this game. He was once handsome and brave, not unlike you. Maybe you'd like to hear his story. Apparently, this is just gonna be like the most spoilerific guacamelee video you could possibly have. There is an overarching story here. So before he became Kalaka, Carlos was known as El Charo. People called him the pinnacle of Chararia. Only one event had eluded him, La Gran Charidia. <laughs> I apologize so much. We don't take Spanish in high school here, at least I didn't in Canada. He was willing to do whatever it took to win it. And uh, let me guess, his hubris was his downfall. He ends up becoming the Lord of the Dead or something. He does some kind of religious ceremony. So Carlos broke his arm. He was devastated and he did the unthinkable. Perhaps killed himself or signed a deal with the devil. I know, I've played The Binding of Isaac. Yes, signed a deal with the devil, of course. Just because I'm able to predict these story beats doesn't mean the story is not enjoyable. Uh, it's absolutely, like I said, it's got its kind of own unique charm. Uh, and it's just a joy to play, like front to back. I've had a ton of fun with Guacamelee so far. I could probably end the video here having shown the story and the boss fights, but I don't want to do that because the thing that keeps bringing me back to Guacamelee and the thing that I find most engaging about it uh, is the Metroidvania aspect, that kind of like backtracking uh, and then opening up new areas because of the new abilities that you get. That's, you know, endemic to something like Super Metroid or Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Again, Outland, Cave Story, uh, etc, etc. Uh, the, the game is designed really well. It's got kind of that Dark Souls world mechanic where everything is kind of a little accessible from the start. Not accessible, but you can see it. Uh, but then it becomes accessible as you get more and more abilities. Uh, so there's a, a constant and very frequent sense of progression that keeps going on. You never feel like you're you're staying in one area too long. I will say, you know, this probably deserves a seizure warning off the top because there is a lot of uh, spinning and flashing colors that happens here. I have no idea what has just gotten happened in the story. There was a cockfight. Oh, and uh, Carlos took over the world of the dead by defeating the devil in a cockfight. Almost in like a devil went down to Georgia style, I guess. Um... Uh, and this should probably be the end of this cutscene. And then we will go back to doing some combat, which is good, because I want to show off, again, a little bit more of the combat and a little bit more of the uh, exploration. So hopefully she will give us our dimension switching power back, which I believe is the entire reason we fought her in the first place, uh, and give us some information about where we should go as well. So maybe she'll help us out here. They've taken the Presidente's daughter to the top of the Temple of War, no doubt for another one of their asinine rituals. To reach the temple, you must first ascend the Great Tool Tree growing from within the forest, but that will require the ability to, to traverse dimensions, allowing me to just bestow this power upon you. I'm going to guess that that is going to be mapped to R1. By the way, we get uh, this kind of splash screen every time we get a new power. And the reason there's two of them? Easy, because there's co-op. So we can switch here. I love the music as well, by the way. Um, as you'll see. But in any case, now we have this dimension switching power. Uh, so we can use that to kind of cleverly platform. There is a wall jump as well, which we have obtained uh, a little earlier in the game. So this is going to allow us to kind of switch dimensions again, very Outland style, uh, to access new areas. Although I will say, um, you know, talking to Graham, the, the co-founder of Drinkbox at, uh, what was I going to say, at PAX East, he, uh, we asked him about Outland because, you know, Nick and I, I believe Nick has played it. I've definitely played Outland. Uh, but uh, I asked him about it, I was like, this is pretty similar to Outland and the dimension switching mechanics. Not to say you ripped it off or anything, and he's like, no, actually, we get that a lot, but I've never played Outland. So, uh, apparently, it's just a weird kind of case of convergent game design, if you will. But it's kind of cool, it also, I guess, you know, if you haven't played Outland, it's got kind of a Gianna Sisters vibe to it. The difference between this and Gianna Sisters, um, and, the, you know, the reason why I like one a lot... Oh, I just wanted to see, it's all cemeteries. Alright, uh, the, the reason I like this a lot more than Gianna Sisters is because there's also a lot of stickier stuff for us to do to kind of keep us in the game. You know, we can turn into the chicken, we can do the the um, headbutt which opens kind of like dense rocks. I, can, I should be able to attack these guys now, yes. Um, anyway, there's just a, a, a whole wider assortment of skills that we can use is what I'm trying to get at. I hope I'm doing a decent job of conveying what makes Guacamelee, I, I think, a really special game. This is, I borderline say, and I don't say this all that often, uh, but I would borderline say this is a must-buy for anybody who, uh, you know, has PSN. Uh, and PSN's been kind of knocking it out of the park with respect to indies lately, so I'm psyched to see uh, something really amazing come out of it. it it's not going to reinvent the wheel. This is not, like, a, a landmark in gaming that's going to change the way people make games for years to come, in all likelihood. Uh, but what it is, is, is a very, very good um, modern take on the kind of retro genre. It's the best Metroidvania I've played in a long time. Uh, if not ever, it might... I mean, again, I'm, I'm saying this after only a few hours of play, so that could change. 
but it's the most fun I've had with the Metroidvania right off the bat since probably I played Cave Story. So, we have, oh, I didn't mean to fall down there. Where are we trying to go? We're trying to go down here to the Tool Tree, so... Tim the Tool Tree Tailor. Do we have... We might as well, because this is the second time we've been in this area. The first time, we didn't have the dimension switching power, so we just kind of fell down here, as you can see. Like, those platforms are only in the uh, dead dimension. Uh, so now what we can do is we can maybe unlock all of these uh, new areas, now that we have all these special powers. And this might allow us to show off a little bit of the exploration and platforming. And it does indeed appear that this is going to be the case. So, uh, we're going to have to use all of our powers in order to uh, traverse this area safely and eventually get to these treasure chests, which may contain uh, money, may contain... Oh, that's not going to do it. May contain uh, upgrades, you know, with respect to our health or something like that. This is going to be a tricky one. Uh, or may contain, uh, I don't know, maybe another upgrade, but those are usually hidden behind statues. Alright, so we got money out of this one. Uh, we should be able to break through this one easily like so. Money comes fast and furious. This is definitely a game uh, where you're going to be seeing a lot of upgrades happen like in a relatively short amount of time. Like I said, I've only played about two hours of this game so far uh, at this point. Oh, that was bad. Uh, but I have seen, uh, or I've gotten seven six maybe up upgrades uh if you count health and stamina uh, along with my wall jump which you don't initially start with you know the ability to turn into a chicken uh which obviously you don't initially start with um and you know the uppercut the the headbutt which you've seen a little bit of that's going to be a second health piece for us um and the stamina upgrades which give us extra bars oh that was not good which give us extra bars for our um oh oh not good I was gonna say, the salmon upgrades give us extra bars for our, uh, like, yellow meter down there. Which is, you know, effectively our stamina. It's a very roundabout way of explaining something that is explained fairly well in the game itself. Uh, but it, this gives you a constant feeling of progression. It, I, I don't doubt that this is a game that you can finish pretty quickly. Again, the guys at Drinkbox told us that they had a speedrun uh, on record from the staff of something like two hours, two and a half hours, which does not surprise me at all. Uh, you know, it seems like this might be like a four to six hour game from a, a first play perspective. But like Mark of the Ninja, I think this is a game that I could definitely see myself replaying over and over. Uh, the reason I'm making these Mark of the Ninja comparisons, I mean, they are both 2D side-scrollers, but uh, the real thing is they both just seem like like highly realized visions. I don't, there's no like non-pretentious way to say it that I can think of. They're, just, they're both just well-polished. They don't kind of like over estimate or overstay their welcome? I don't know. Maybe I can't explain it properly, so I'll just choose not to. But I, they both leave very good tastes in my mouth, shall we say. Now, there was a blue block down there that I can't break right now. Uh, so instead, we'll just go fight this guy who was going to hurt me because I'm apparently bad at video games. We'll get this. We'll toss him over here. Of course, you can use enemies to, to hit other enemies. Uh, we can also... There's a, a launcher, which I haven't really used all that much, but maybe if we get into a more open area. Uh, that's really good for, for crowd control. Taking a look at our map right now. We want to drop down through here, it seems. Could buy some more stuff, but uh, that's not necessary right now. So another uh, mechanic that I haven't talked about too much, we actually want to drop down this way, is uh, the roll, which actually gives us a uh, the ability to dodge those like spikes, which is how I got past that one platforming element. Let's toss this guy up. I was hoping I could toss him into this dude. Uh, but let's try our launcher now. So with up and square, we can do a launcher. And, oh, I didn't even realize we could... Uh, grapple people and throw them diagonally. That's actually really useful uh, and changes the way that I play a little bit. So if I, I thought the, that was like a projectile coming for me. Is there a red guy still left? Yeah, so as he throws this, I can roll through it and it won't do damage. And that's just by flicking the right analog stick, uh, which, you know, feels natural. A lot of games use that mechanic. Uh, no loading times, by the way, as we move through uh, a lot of these levels. Whenever we kind of... Oh, that's not right. Whenever we exit a uh, an area, we will get a small loading time. But the loading times in the game are, are very, very good. By the way, I meant to mention this earlier, but I forgot. Uh, this will be probably coming to PC at some point. The guys at Drinkbox were a little bit coy about it. Uh, they didn't say for sure whether it would ever come to PC, but they did strongly suggest that it might be an option in the future. But It's unofficial right now. So we are in a new area. Uh, the map system works really well. I, I almost never get lost in this game, which is something for me, because I you know, usually find it difficult to navigate. It's why I almost prefer linear games sometimes. This is a, a fast travel system for us. Just want to activate that. Uh, is there a faster way up here that I'm missing so far? It appears not. We are going to ascend the tool tree, apparently. And at that point, I might finish the video, because again, I don't want to show off too much, especially if this is a, a short game. Uh, but consider this, at least so far... Oh! My uh, strong recommendation 
to at least check out Guacamelee. There is a demo available, as there is for every game on PSN. There will be a link in the video description to the store. Oh, come on. To the store page, uh, if you guys are curious and actually picking this up for yourself. Again, it does have cross-buy. Uh, so if you buy this on, uh, you know, Vita or uh, PSN, you will gain access to the other version of the game as well, should you own both platforms, which, you know, might not apply to that many people out there, but it is cool that that's an option nonetheless. Spelunky's coming to the Vita as well. It's been a really good kind of couple of months for um, Sony in particular when it comes to indie games like this. I gotta say, uh, they, it appears, and I'm not meaning this to be uh, offensive to any developers watching this who might be Microsoft, or affiliated with Microsoft, but it appears that they are kicking Microsoft's ass in the indie game lately. Uh, of course, still, PC appears to be the place to go, but in any case, that's neither here nor there. We're, this is a celebration of a great game, not necessarily an invitation to start any kind of platform warfare. Uh, you know, maybe we want to buy something now. Maybe we can buy uh, another health chunk, because in buying a health chunk, that'll actually give us a new health bar, because we just got three of them there. Uh, and, you know, the, the store's a little... Eh, there's not a whole lot available in the store. Uh, stun boost might actually be something that we want to pick up, but it's not like there's a ton of moves that we're going to be unlocking here. Mostly, it's like those three kind of optional moves, and then after that, uh, you know, you're just buying health and stamina upgrades. At least that's the way it appears so far. Oh, I botched that miserably. Let's think about this for a second, because my guess, you know, this is a game where there's a lot of alternate paths, and when you hit those alternate paths... Uh, oh shit. Usually, uh, there will be some reward for you waiting, like a, uh, a health upgrade, for example. So, this is gonna require some pretty good platforming, it seems. Uh, we might not actually be able to make it. Uh, let's try it, though. That's obviously not what we want to do. I'll give this one more try, and if I don't, can't get to the center there, uh, then maybe we'll just call it off for now. You want to hit it, like, there. No, I think I'm missing maybe some kind of element that would make that easier for us. We just want to go straight up. There is a treasure chest over there, so we want to stomp on this knight. Knock him up in the air, maybe. Just push him off the edge might actually be the best way to do this. But let's pull him back, because I want to make sure I don't lose the coins here. And there we go. We just punched him to death. Again, money uh, pretty frequent. It takes like 2,000 uh, to buy an upgrade at this point, And uh, we're gaining like 50 or more per enemy. Which means, uh, you know, do the math on that one, like 40 enemies is going to get you an upgrade. And, you know, there's times when we'll fight 10 enemies at once during those, like, mob trap rooms. Uh, so that's certainly not a lot. Uh, mob trap rooms like this one, for example. So these are uh, kind of a pain in the ass. They are flying enemies exclusively. Oftentimes we are going to have to use a uh, an uppercut to get up to them. Now that we can switch dimensions on the fly, though, previously they were bound to portals in the game. So the ability to switch between them on the fly is definitely a worthwhile upgrade. So if I know this game... We are going to get another, yes, wave of enemies here. Unfortunately, I took some damage there. But we've already killed one of the flying enemies. The flowers are also super annoying. So, you know, there's a lot of annoyance on this mob trap room specifically right here. Uh, let's see if we can knock this guy into the wall, bust his brains out, and then deal with these assholes right here. So we'll knock that guy out. Um, he's going to hurt us. Oh, actually, I don't know if we can be hurt by things in the other dimension. I'm pretty sure we can, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. So that thing's going to disappear. We'll knock him out. We'll do our launcher, catch him in the air, throw him up, launch him again. Ah, oh, we can't grapple him again. I thought I could. And we should get a pinata there. Usually it's two waves, uh, unlike the Binding of Isaac. So, we'll continue going through here, and I'll probably just continue playing until we get to the next objective. Uh, I don't know what I've done there. I almost killed myself. There is a treasure chest in here. We've just got to dimension switch appropriately, I guess. Uh, starting here. Uh, and then, I guess we just got to stand in the places where there are not... Uh, any blocks that will kill us, which is going to become probably increasingly difficult as time goes on, if I had to guess. Uh, we'll stand here and then switch, and we'll fall down to this treasure chest, which has given us another health trinket, actually, which, unfortunately, uh, not all that useful for me, considering I just bought one. But hey, you know, I guess it's one extra in the whole scheme of things, regardless. How do we get out of here is the real question. I guess I can just wall jump up to, like, here... And then switch, and then maybe make my way over here. I should just be able to repeat my actions, or, you know, replicate my actions. Unfortunately, uh, I don't remember exactly what my actions and steps were. So, that's not going to be necessarily easy for us. Maybe we just fall straight down. Uh, here? Uh, I don't want to be trapped in here anymore. Where is our super suit? Where, no, where is our kind of free space that we can stand? Please just let me out of here. I, oh, we can stand there. Okay. Crisis averted. Maybe. I hope. Again. This is what I mean when I say that, you know, spatial awareness, not always uh, my best characteristic in video games. So it's kind of a remarkable 
that I don't get lost in Guacamelee. And a testament to A, good level design, and B, uh, having a totally suitable map. I think we want to jump up the other side here. Oh, we can't. It's slippery. All right. So we're going to have to do things the old-fashioned way here. Like, oh, okay. I got it. It's, it's weird getting used to this, like, dimension switching mechanic. Uh, on the fly, basically. There we go. That one's good. So we're going to have to use our uppercut, uh, I think, for all of these. Like so. It's harder than it looks. I promise you that. Oh, my God. I botched it. Okay, let's try this again. Do 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 And then, ah, oh, I phased in the middle of it. At least it doesn't kill us, though. Again, the platforming is much more difficult than the combat has been for me so far. Uh, not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing. So I think we want to do, like... Herp the herp the herp, and that'll work. Uh, and then we should just be able to wall jump. Uh, like so. Oh, I botched it so hard. We were right at the end. Let's try this again. Again, this might be infuriating, but this is a game where you know a little trial and error is to be expected, uh, given the nature of it. You know, Super Metroid is not a game where you're going to be able to hit all those jumps first time out. I was fucking there that time. Don't even give me that bullshit. And of course, you know the optional stuff is uh harder to get to most of the time. Uh, than the the stuff that is not necessarily mandatory, but you know story based If you will so so far so good Try this again. I think the real secret here is just patience of which you know, I'm kind of notoriously lacking There we go. We just took it slowly and imagine that we actually managed to make it work here uh, Now we got to do exactly the same thing over again, which frightens me because I don't like change, but that's okay We'll just jump up like so um you want to do this? All right, that worked out surprisingly well. Just took a little learning curve there. There's a lot of those uh, chests that allow us to buy things, by the way. We actually can't make our way up there unless we go around the outside. Obviously, those spikes will hurt us, so we don't want to deal with them, but we will switch dimensions just to make it possible to platform across here. Like so, and then this will unlock this. Oh, no, I can't actually get there from up top. Instead, I guess we'll just fall to our death. Now, what I want to do is actually... Oop. Oh, and it worked. All right. Kind of just did it by feel that time. This might be an optional area, though. It appears that it is, but we can break through this way. Uh, maybe we can become a chicken and go through here. We can indeed. I really like the chicken mechanic on the, the power ball. We can also attack this way, by the way. Uh, what is wrong with this guy? Oh, it's some kind of bomb. So I guess we want to kill them before they explode. This is going to be real annoying, I can already tell you that. Oh, I, I forgot this guy. We have to uppercut him first. This guy's definitely going to explode. We should just get the F away. I hope it doesn't hurt me still. It did. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't really make much sense, I guess. Uh, so let's kill this guy. This guy's got no kind of aura associated with him, so we should be okay. Same with this guy. This other guy, though, I gotta figure out what it is quickly. It's the one where you break his skull with your skull. Oh, these guys are gonna... These are, like, quick, like a bunny dudes who are real annoying. And I'm getting hit by them in the other dimension. So that answers that question from earlier. Uh, we definitely want to explode that dude, too throw you over there you should be dead or at least very close to it seriously there we go okay now we'll switch dimensions and we'll, we'll fight in the old-fashioned way actually I want to kill this blow-up dude first otherwise we might find ourselves in difficult spots and of course this is gonna be me eating my words saying that the combat is actually not that difficult this mob trap room actually required a little bit of uh, not micromanagement but uh, multitasking shall we say but we get a little bit more money. We are basically at the point where we could buy a second upgrade or, you know, a third or fourth upgrade. I can't remember how many we bought so far in this video. Just to illustrate my points uh, of how kind of frequent upgrades are to get. Uh, I've got this one down. It is, it's kind of weird to get used to this platforming style. And I mean that in uh, the best way possible. You, it does require a little bit like more active thought and not just hitting the dimension switching button as I've been doing right there because I'm a big ding dong. And uh, there, which just caused me to fall to my death. Sometimes you will get a loading screen after your death, but, you know, in true kind of Meat Boy style, uh, death is mostly just a kind of a nuisance. It's not really like a major frustrator in this game, at least so far. Which is good, again, because it kind of allows the game to have that high difficulty level without really uh, frustrating or alienating the player. There we go. And we finally made it. Because I am bad at video games, as I mentioned many times before. So, this has been kind of the longest, like, non dungeon setup that I've had in this game so far. The game isn't really divided into dungeons, but there are like mission types as you might expect. I'm not sure if this is some kind of shortcut up here. I'm not even sure if I can get to that area up there. I can't. So, or down there I should say. So I, I won't worry about that too much. We did get a statue though. Uh, what the statue is probably going to allow us to do if I had to guess is double jump. Those are obviously a, a serious Metroid reference. Uh, and they usually give us some kind of special ability that we can use to get to uh, an area that would otherwise be inaccessible. So, 
we will see here what this goat mage is going to give us. Okay, again, it is just double jump. And the reason I predicted that, of course, is because uh, we just had that kind of like unscalable wall that we came to. So by double jumping and using our uppercut, it should make it much easier to get out of here. And then we should be able to get up to this area at the top by using double jump and a combination of our uppercut as well. Turn into a chicken and then probably dimension switch. Yes. So in doing so, we'll get out of here fairly easily. Uh, switch back into a man and then drop down like so. I'm not sure how much more I want to show off. Might as well go through here and this might be like, we'll probably now get a chance to use our, our new ability. And we can double jump between walls, which actually is a nice mechanic, because it makes these, like, wider chasms easier to traverse. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure how much more I want to show off, because again, if it is a, a shortish game, uh, then I don't necessarily want to, uh, spoil it, you know, for everyone involved. Sadly, I don't think I can get up that way. I might have to do things this way, which would be interesting, because I have no idea how I would make this happen. I guess that's the answer. This is going to be a hard jump to make, but there is a treasure chest here, so we're going to jump, dodge, double jump. And then we're going to have to jump dodge in the middle of this one as well, which again might be borderline impossible. Uh, we almost made it there. We just got to be a little bit higher, which is just good advice for everything in life. Let's be honest. There we go. Not even close. All right. You know what? I think that's going to do it for Let's Look at uh, Guacamelee. A couple things I've neglected to mention so far, or not mention enough, perhaps. Um, oh, just hang out there for a second. We can just stick on a wall. Um, again, uh, drop in, drop out, local multiplayer. Uh, as well as the crossplay function that allows you to play it, uh, you know, on the same save on uh, Vita or PS3. So you can play it on the, the PS3, then switch over to your Vita if you were, like, going out to do something on the bus or something. It is a short game, so I'm not sure how relevant that's going to be for a lot of people. At least I've heard it's a short game. But overall, uh, as we quit back to the main menu here, very, very positive impressions of Guacamelee. I'd say, you know, of the stuff I played from Drinkbox, this is absolutely the best that they've produced. This might so far be the most fun I've had playing a game this year, which is kind of heady praise. Uh, you know, this and, and Runner 2, I feel, are both, like, absurdly fun games. And I can't really think of a good reason not to buy this. Uh, this is going to be $15, or it is $15, I guess, available now on the PlayStation Store. Again, cross-buy, buying on the PS3 also gets you the Vita version if you are interested or, you know, have the possibilities and capabilities to make that work. In any case, strongly recommend this one. Whether you buy it now or wait for a sale is up to your personal discretion. Uh, but Guacamelee, especially if you're into old-school Metroidvanias, is not a game to be missed. Uh, Hard-pressed to think of much negative to say about it. Even the length, it might seem like I'm totally fanboying out right here, but... Uh, even the length just kind of strikes me as not necessarily a negative, because I could see myself playing through this game, uh, again, at least a couple more times, just to try to speed run it and get, like, the fastest possible run that I could possibly get, which would probably be super slow, because I'm bad at video games, as we've talked about. In any case, again, thank you guys for watching. There will be a link in the video description to go to the store page on PSN if you are interested in picking it up. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will 